and it's only appropriate tonight that I should dredge up the storehouse of panhandle memories, mother road memories of this stretch of the road. I can still so clear as day, and I noticed there was a replica poster over here on the auction. I guess it's a redo, although I saw my name signed on it, and Jim Ross and a few others. But I can still remember the first one of these official festivals. And it was in October, it was beautiful weather, October Ted Hot of 1996. And you know where it was, it was at Landergan, Texas. Some of you who are kind of new to the road probably just zip right by or through Landergan on your way to go get an ugly crust pie or something, you know, <laughs> down in France. But Landergan was and still is a real place. And thanks to the guy that got all this started, and I hope to heck I look for him. Is David Knudsen in this room? Yes. Hey, well, yes. There he is. Stand up, David. It's a man we all owe a tremendous amount to, David Knudsen and his late great wife, Mary Lou, another angel of the road, a great woman, a great woman, and she was so happy at that festival at Landrigan. I remember, I remember going back to that fence and the cowboys coming up on the horse. It was so dusty. We were talking about it at the summit the other day. I've never seen so many flies in my life. <laughs> and they were like the ones in cars. They were like little VWs. They were all over. <laughs> and they were kind of vicious little flies. But it was okay. It was just a great event. There were people from all over the place. The people came from California. We had people from New Mexico all over came in, in, in there. It was it was wonderful, and I can remember how all, as they are on the road, all your senses are touched, sometimes for the better, sometimes not, uh, including your sense of smell, because I remember, but it was good, and it's a good memory. We edit out the bad stuff, but I can remember that interesting smell, that blend of fresh manure and that steaming pot of Croc Lyle's pungent chili and how it combined in that October air. And I think most of that chili was seasoned well with his cigar ashes, which definitely improved it. But David, I thank you for that event. Under that big old tent, we were all sweating. We all had on cowboy air conditioners, bandanas soaked in ice water or a liquid of your choice. And David, I, that was a great event. And, I, and it was the launch of a series of great events that continue to this very night. Now occasionally, thank you. This stretch right here, this panhandle stretch of 66 between Oklahoma and between New Mexico is so important, even though it's sort of ironic because it's not anywhere near the longest. It's a bit longer than Kansas. <laughs> but like Kansas, like good Kansas, these two states, they might not have a lot of mileage, but what they have is great. There's nothing better than that stretch of Kansas. Yes, sir. I hear you, Dean. <laughs> that little stretch of Kansas means so much. It means a lot to my adopted brothers and sisters. You know, I'm a Missourian, so that road comes out of Missouri. It comes out of Joplin, which will survive, which will revive, which will resurrect, by the way, and we all know that. Yeah. Yeah. But for many years, that road out of Joplin, down through Kansas, quenched the thirst of a man, good many Jayhawkers and Hokies, believe me. <laughs> and it drops down right into Mickey Mantle country, right in Oklahoma, right through all those good, that good, hard mining country, and that little litany of towns, Galena and Riverton and Baxter Springs.
tremendous. Just like this bridge here across the great panhandle is so important, really important. This historic highway, the length and breadth of it would not be the same without the panhandle stretch, and I think we all know that. We know and we all harbor those memories, sweet memories, sometimes bitter memories, sad times, both good and bad times, all of them on the old road, on the current road, on the road of the future. Memories of that Irish town I just mentioned, David Russian's town, Old Shamrock. Uh, there was a man there named Richard Smith. Now, he had a classic Texas accent. Uh, oftentimes, I couldn't understand Richard when he spoke to me. But I understood him because he also spoke from his heart. He was, he was a good fellow. He's gone, but I know he's still around there in old Irish town. There was an old cowboy I met there, and I wish I could call his name. I bet David Russian would know him. He was a bow-legged old man. You could drive a Volkswagen under his legs. <laughs> and he, when he was a kid, he scratched out some words and with a big old carpenter's nail in the dust, and he won the contest naming the you drop in I do remember that about it. But here's what I remember about him. Four times a year, that old man went to the Big Texan when it was up on old 66 and when it was down on the super slab, thumbing its nose at the super slab. And he went in that big Texan and sat down every quarter, four times a year, and he ate the big guy, the 72 ounce steak. And he usually finished 40 minutes, sometimes 45. He wasn't trying to impress anybody. He just liked to take that steak on. Little bitty old cowboy guy. But here's the kicker. Every time he did it, he took his teeth out first. <laughs> now, you know, and I know what you're thinking out there. I know what Ron Warnick's thinking. He knows that I'm Irish, and he knows that every story gets better with the next telling. <laughs> But if, and, and this guy came from Irish town, but if I'm lying, I'm dying, that old man did that. He took his teeth out. And I told Bobby Lee right then and there, you've got a great gimmick on the road, but that old man is your gimmick. If that old man can gum down that big steak as big as a doormat. These are good memories. These are good memories. Oh, wait down. Memories of Alan Reed, formerly known as... Gaujai. That's a great name. Boy, that's a great name. That's right up there. We're cut and shoot for Texas names. Alan Reed. Probably very few in the room, except for Delbert True and a few real old, old-timers like Clark Lyle, will remember the Regal Reptile Ranch set right there in Alan Reed. Every time I go by there, I see that blank spot, but I know where it was. It scarred the minds of many children. <laughs> because in that big den of death in there, just teeming with bull snakes and rat snakes, this nice little old lady came out in the afternoon and dumped a box of baby chicks in there. <laughs> <laughs> they had pink and blue raccoons and possums. It was a pretty strange place. Thankfully, it's gone on. <laughs> Big Mother Road in the sky. All the reptiles in that part of the country are breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> memories, good memories of this panhandle. Slipping in there at the McLean. Watching, if, you, if you've never seen it, you've got to give Delbert True to create Devil's Rope right before your eyes in that old museum, in that old Brazier factory. You, it's wonderful to watch him twist that wire. And of course, memories right here. And some of you are out at the old triangle. Or you can remember that original Big Texan that Bobby's daddy had cooking up steaks. Or I can remember 
coming through this town in an ice storm, sliding like a hockey puck, just dodging <laughs> folks. <laughs> or hitchhiking into this town. I did a lot of hitchhiking. And if I got to Amarillo, I usually was pretty cold. What's the old saying about Amarillo? There's nothing between Amarillo and the North Pole but a three strong barbed wire fence and two wires are already down. <laughs> Whoa. If I was hitchhiking here and somebody stopped, I'd get in the, I don't care if it was Charlie Manson. I'd get in the <laughs>